And a very good evening, everybody. After taking two from Grand Forks in a solo game from Kalispell, Bird's home tonight to take on longtime rival Dickinson, the Rough Riders. Let's see how things went in game one. Top of the six, Colin Cheddar is going to double off the wall, and the Rough Riders looking to get some insurance here. It's Camden Kubis. They've been Kubis is playing for Dickinson and Dickinson Trinity forever. He comes up with a base hit that's going to make it four to two. So four to two Dickinson. Here comes the home team. Bottom of the frame, all WDA selection. Alex Bloom continues to pound the ball. Infield hit, runs going to score. It's going to make it a four three game. Bottom of the seventh we go. Birds trying to tie it up. Men on, but Jace Kovash is going to get Tyler Temes to ground out. The Kibritz lose a close game four to three. But folks. They would come back and win the nightcap. More good news in just a moment. The Crosby Cubs on the road this afternoon to take on Burlington. Let's see how things went in their game one. Easton Eric's Moen, good quarterback. He's going to throw the high changeup, and uh, they do not score, so a good move there. Burlington back up in the second. Logan Rystad is going to blast one to the corner in right. Kyler Fisher is going to score. That will be a triple. And uh, Burlington is off and rolling. Then Ty Hughes is going to get up to the plate. And he's going to come up with an extra base hit. Braden Nelson will score. Looks like a nice day in Burlington. So they're rolling there. Then two runners on. Drew Rodocker with a base hit to center. Colin Klutz and Colin Abernathy are going to score. Burlington wins big in game one. Final there 26-2-3. So, Dickinson gets Williston 4 to 3. Good news in the nightcap was they won 8 to 5. Uh, Bloom, 3 for 3, continues to hit the ball, and Ashton Collings came in to put out the fire. So, the Keybirds split. Uh, 4 to 3, a loss, 8 to 5. Win. Burlington gets Crosby 26 to 3, and a closer ball game in game 2, 7 to 3. Now, folks, baseball players at every level of the game love the term Rawlings Golden Glove Award winner. And Teton catcher Zach Stark won one. He becomes the first Teton to ever win the Golden Glove, and you know he's excited about it. Um, it is a pretty surreal feeling. Um, it kind of makes me, you know, um, understand that I have a lot more potential than I thought of. So just, uh, it, it's kind of motivated me to keep working harder and win some more awards in the future. I mean, you're the top defensive catcher in the nation for JUCO. I mean, what a great honor. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, it, like I said, it's a surreal feeling. Like I, I wasn't really expecting it, and it happened, so I'm just very, very happy to have the award. Now, there have been a lot of great catchers in the history of the Teton baseball program, but you're the only one to pull it off. That's going to make you feel good, because I know you work hard at your craft. Yeah, no, I feel like I'm very proud of myself. And, uh, yeah, just knowing all the hard work I put in paid off. So that's all I can say. You caught 50 games this year, 50 games. How were you so durable during a long college baseball season? Uh, you know, just drink your water and eat your vegetables, I guess. And uh, making sure you're staying uh, mobile and you're taking care of your body and whatever you got to do to make sure you can play those um, seven innings or 14 innings or nine innings, whatever you're playing. Make sure you guys go for that and that you can relax up for that. So just be prepared for that game time. And once you got... And just a tremendous thrill for him. And remember that name. Uh, Minnesota, maybe the... the uh, the, the harsh words from uh, old Rocco paid off. They, they won 8-1. to one. Kepler and Buxton and Gallo had homers. Let's take a timeout. 